What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner. Today I wanted to talk about my concealed carry handguns. So before we get into this, I know it's a pretty controversial topic. So I do conceal carry appendix and that's a big thing. So before we get into it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what Eminem did in Eight Mile and I am gonna put out all the disses before you guys get to, but feel free to anyways, cause it's gonna be pretty funny. So again, I carry appendix. So yes, I will shoot myself in the dick or I'll shoot myself in the leg like Cheddar Bob. My shield does not have a light, so I will die a painful death in the dark by someone that does. What else? We got a Glock 43 here. Same thing, no light, but it's pretty cool looking, and that's all that matters when you can still carry. Yes, 380 is not good enough for self-defense. It's just going to piss them off, and they're going to kill me anyways. And yes, I am terrified of the world, and since I have all that space down there, since nothing else is there, I do need a light, and a very tactical handgun fills that vibe. So with that out of the way, let's get into what I can still carry every day. Hopefully that made you guys laugh a little bit. It kind of made me laugh thinking about it, but so yeah, this is going to be a video about what I conceal carry on a regular basis. And I'm not necessarily the big proponent of carrying 20 different guns, but I do have a couple here for different purposes and I'm going to kind of get into that. So this has been my concealed carry gun for about the last seven years. I've owned this for a while. It is a Gen 1 Smith & Wesson Shield. First of all, these are all loaded. I will unload them, but they don't do me any good unloaded. I have a wall here with brick on the outside. But yeah, this is a Smith & Wesson Shield. It's a Gen 1. It does have some upgrades to it. So it does have an Apex trigger here. It's got Trigicon HD night sights, which I don't know if that'll show on there, but it's got a bright orange front sight, makes it very easy to pick up and they do glow in the dark. And honestly, you need like slight low light. You can't just shoot in the pitch black without a light. So I understand that. But yeah, this is a very nice gun. The trigger is extremely light and I've probably put four-ish thousand rounds to this, which is a lot for a concealed carry handgun. I would say working in a gun store, most people don't put that many rounds through their carry guns. Like this, for example, came into our store used and the guy, the guy said he didn't like it, but he probably didn't have more than 50 rounds to it. So different story, but yeah, this is my Gen 1 shield. I will never get rid of it. It was my very first concealed carry handgun. Like that was actually concealable. My very first handgun was a Glock 34 and I carried that in gym shorts. Yeah in a $12 nylon holster. So it can be done. Like it, that you can still carry anything with effort. It can be done. But then I eventually switched to this and this was my dedicated concealed carry for about seven years. I got this tier one concealed holster for it. So my buddy Ryan, he put me on to tier one concealed. He actually bought this for me as a gift years ago. And it's an amazing holster. Uh, it's an appendix rig, it carries an extra mag here that has federal hydroshock ammo in it. I mainly use hydroshock, HST or spear gold dot. So this one has gold dot. They all shoot roughly the same. I do test my hollow points before I really run them in a gun. Like I'll buy a couple boxes, shoot at least a few mags through it and then load the extra um, ammo and mag. So I carry, I always have extra mags on me. So in a rig like this, I'll carry the rig plus one extra mag and it gets me hopefully enough ammo to get somewhere safe. But yeah, I carry about three mags on me at any time and it's all spear gold dot, federal HST or hydroshock, something along those lines. You don't have to be too ammo picky. I wouldn't buy the bottom of the barrel, but it, honestly, most self-defense ammo is pretty decent nowadays. I also live in Arizona where everyone wears t-shirts, so most likely if I had to defend myself, they're not wearing a trench suit. But yeah, so this is my Gen 1 Smith & Western Shield. I really like it, and I kind of like the uh, black and red vibe. That kind of, it, it goes with all my guns so far, but yeah. Tier 1 still makes good holsters. And then when I went to this one, so I actually got this one a few months ago. This is a Glock 43 Langdon Tactical decked out one. So Langdon Tactical took a Glock 43, they upgraded the trigger, they put a Trigicon RMR on there. So it's a direct cut RMR CC. And then it's also got iron sights in the RMR, which is pretty cool. And I probably have four to 500 rounds to this so far. I've been carrying it a lot more recently. And anytime you switch to a new carry gun, there is a learning curve on it. The one thing I've learned with this is with my hand, when I reload, if I don't fully take my entire hand off, sometimes the mag stick, I like running these metal base plate mags because it does make them drop free a little faster because it's polymer on polymer. So it's not as slick as like a steel mag dropping out of the shield. These things yeet out of the bottom of my shield. I've never had any issues, but the one thing, again, learning a new handgun, there's always something. The one thing I've learned with this is the magazines. I really have to kind of take my hand off to drop the magazines out. So a little bit slower, but other than that, it shoots amazing. I do like having a red dot on my pistol and at some point I might do a light, but this is also a tier one concealed holster. This one's not set up for a light. I kind of mainly run this one if I'm running a light. So I'll kind of get into that in a sec, 
But yeah, so far, four to 500 rounds through this, I have no issues. Um, anytime you have a carry gun, right? Like you are potentially gonna have feeding issues. And I don't necessarily keep track of all of those unless it was like an every mag kind of thing or every range trip kind of thing. But you're gonna have some type of malfunction at some point of your life. It's very unlikely that you're just gonna have the most perfect gun, the most perfect ammo. So learning how to work through any problem you might have with a gun is very important. So I don't, I always have this in my backpack still with me because let's say, you know, I, I have some type of issue with this. I just wanna have this nearby. Now, if I have an issue with it when my life depends on it, different story, but so far, again, four or 500 rounds through this at the range, I haven't had any issues that would make me not wanna carry it. So I do like it. Like I said, the, the mag change is a little bit slower just because I really have to let my whole hand go. But other than that, shoots good. The red dot is much nicer than just the iron sights. And I shoot my shield pretty good, but this has been a pretty nice upgrade so far. And it's still only the eight round gun or six plus two with this Terran base pad. So yeah, I, at some point I might do a 43X or whatnot, but I did like how this came into our shop all decked out. And then I got the Terran mags and these are all federal HST 147 grain. And then another tier one concealed holster. Again, I like tier one concealed. My buddy bought me my first one. And that'll kind of go into this third one here, which is my shadow system. So this is the gun if, especially during winter time, I like having this one because it's got a light, it's got an RMR, much bigger handle. And I shoot more rounds through this gun than anything else. I am about 10,000 rounds through this gun. I plan on doing just a standalone video on this at some point, but yeah, I love this gun. This setup has 10,000 rounds on it. The TLR one is looking a little ratty. Like this is a thousand lumen light. I'm gonna shine it at you guys. It's probably still bright, but it is not very bright anymore and it's kind of dirty right now, but I just need to clean it up. But I definitely notice a lumen drop from a brand new TLR one. So that's just one thing to consider with lights, but the TLR one is a very impressive light and you see how beat up this thing is on the front. 10,000 rounds is no joke for, you know, it, that, that thing is right there. So all that blast is just beating the top of that. But other than that, the gun works perfect. The RMR works perfect. Another thing to consider when handguns, right? People always complain about triggers. Now this is a stock gun internally, other than my RMR and my light. This is a completely stock shadow systems. It's an MR918 Elite. They are on the 920 Elite. They have been for years, but people still, like I hear people still buy shadow systems and swap the triggers. Like with a gun like this, you're not gonna know what the actual trigger feels like until you're like maybe 500 to 1000 rounds in. Triggers have a break-in period. It's kind of like a brand new car. The car might break in over five to 10,000 miles or you know 1,000 miles, then it's not gonna be exactly how it is just a few miles in. So same thing with guns. They really do have a break-in period. This gun feels better than off the wall MR920s in our store because I just it's so broken in. The trigger feels much lighter than any MR920 in our store. And that's just because I've shot a lot around. So it kind of polishes itself over time. But other than that, it's an amazing gun. It's a little bulky. I would like, what I would like to do is get another Shadow Systems, an MR920, just to have an updated one, because again, 10,000 rounds through this, I've never changed any part on it. But I'd like to get an updated MR920, and I think what I'd do with that is a TLR7, because that'll line up flush, and it'll be a little bit smaller, and that'll probably be my everyday carry. But again, I don't try to just buy an everyday carry every month. We have some people that do that. I highly recommend just sticking with what you purchase and getting used to it. That's kind of what I did with the Shield. This was not the best option in the world, but it has worked very well and I feel pretty confident with this gun. So same thing with this, very confident with this gun. And again, I've only had this gun for four to 500 rounds, so I'm building it up. But yeah, love this one. Also a tier one concealed holster. And yeah, this light does, it does kind of dig in a little bit and then it obviously prints way more. But if you wear a baggy or shirt or a jacket, you really can't see it. And also people don't even notice. I, I've carried this gun in a lot of places where I wasn't supposed to carry guns. No one ever said anything because they don't pay attention. Now, the last option, and I really got this option as a very tiny concealed carry gun. If I go to California, I ain't going there defenseless, but I don't want to print as much. So something like this, this is a Ruger LCP2. I had the LCP1, the trigger is dog trash. Like I'm all for, you know, 
running a gun mostly stock if possible, but the trigger does need to be a usable trigger. The LCP-1 triggers were absolute trash. The LCP-2 is a much better trigger. I like this one a lot. It's a very clean break. Now, what's trash on this though, is the iron sights. They're basically non-existent. They're like a World War I 1911 sights. They're terrible, but it's a point and shoot gun. And I use this for running. So if I go, like I'll go run five to 10 miles and I'll put this in my gym shorts and have no issues. This holster, I don't know who makes it. I bought it used through our store. But what I do with gym shorts or what anything else that has a string, I just tie the string over the clip right here. So I'll carry that appendix. I still carry an extra mag, but I have this running bag where I keep the mag right here because I don't like having anything in my pockets flopping around when I'm running. So yeah, just something to think about because um, this is only six rounds. I still want to carry an extra mag on me because chances are you won't have any malfunctions, but let's say if you, have, if you ran dry on ammo in a self-defense situation, one, that would suck, but you want to be able to top off your gun or if you had a malfunction, you know, you'd hopefully get to cover and be able to reload. So I always think having an extra mag, no matter what you carry, even if you carry a 30 round gun, have an extra mag, just trust me. But yeah, LCP2 is the last gun as my carry handgun and it is really just a running gun. Now, one thing with this, I bought this brand new and for the first 200 rounds of this gun, it was not a reliable gun at all. And I was really debating getting rid of it, but I just kind of pushed through the first 200 rounds and since then, like I probably have about a thousand rounds on this, which is a lot for a tiny 380, no issues. I trust this gun pretty completely now and it's not my everyday carry, but it, this is so easy to throw in a bag. I could literally keep this and this in my backpack and it doesn't cost me any extra space. I don't keep this in my backpack, but I honestly just keep this in my running bag for whenever I am getting ready to go run. But yeah, that's my main backup right now. But yeah, those are my main carry handguns. I don't, I really don't carry any other handguns. I have a lot of other handguns, but it's just, I don't like to spread myself too thin because you are naturally gonna shoot better with some things than you are others. And I think if you had a handgun for every day of the week, sure you could do it. And I think I'm at a point where I could pick up any handgun and shoot, but I, th I think, you know, if you're a beginner, right? A lot of beginners tend to jump on the bandwagon of every new handgun that comes out every few months. And honestly, they spend like a lot of these holsters I've bought used, they spend a lot of money buying a new holster. They spend a lot of money decking out a new gun. They shoot it for a couple hundred rounds. They're like, oh, I don't like it. Let me do another one. So, I mean, if that's what you want to do, then you do you because it helps, you know, people like me get deals on nice guns. But if you're trying to be cost effective and really learn your system, I think to really get an understanding for a gun, I would recommend shooting 500 to 1,000 rounds to it. You're not gonna absolutely kill the value doing that. I bought guns with more than a thousand rounds on them and have no issues, but yeah, I really think most people should just stick with training more, shooting more ammo before just buying a whole nother gun. But that's just my two cents. I like, I, I like guns. I buy guns every month, but I carry just a few because I wanna make sure I don't spread myself too thin as far as what I can shoot. So those are my main carry guns. I hope you enjoyed. And it's not that these will be my only carry guns forever. I plan on getting new ones here in the future, but this is what I carry as of right now. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.